Every third person on the planet depends on these water reserves. But evidence of climate change can be seen here. The Himalayas are too warm. The glaciers here are melting faster than those in Europe and the effects are starting to reach us. Drops fall into India's holy river, the Ganges, which has its source here at the foot of the Korobari Glacier. The India glaciologist D.P. Dopal was one of the first to point out the rapid melting of the ice. The Chorobari Glacier has been melting at double its usual rate for the past 10 years. The glacier is receding almost 8 kilometers per year. We have a small, short period of winter, we have a larger period of summer. So, due to the larger period of summer, the glacier is melting more, and on the other hand, less snowfall is here. The scientists are preparing to take their measurements for 2010. They bore channels in the ice using steam. These channels are several meters deep and when they are made, bamboo tubes are pushed through them to work out the total loss of mass. But how much will this ice sheet have shrunk this time? itself. It is easy to see by the walls at the side of the glacier that the ice was once much taller. This top third comprises the growth zone where new ice should be made from the snow deposits. You see that all the mountains are barren. Sometime before, 10 years before and 1 decay and 2 decay. These all mountains are covered by the snow. Snow and a thick blanket of snow is covered with all mountains. But now there is no snow, a very less snow is here. If the glacier is not to disappear completely, this place should be covered in snow and ice, metres thick. And yet glacial cracks are lying open, melting away at an alarming rate. And that's not all. Dobal shows us in the top right ice field that the glacier is broken into little pieces, which is speeding up the melting process further. Where there ought to be a thick ice crust, there is now a stream flowing down the rock face. Only melting is there. We are losing only our glacier volume. So this will be another problem in coming future. And not just a problem for India. Ten of the world's biggest rivers have their source here in the Himalayas. 6,000 glaciers flood the Ganges alone with their meltwater. 80% of its torrents are made up of ice water. Rock particles ground down by the glacier sparkle in the river. Currently, the water levels are rising thanks to the meltwater. But over the next 20 years, the scientists expect less and less to flow from the mountains. 500 million people are completely dependent on the Ganges. They use it for drinking water and they grow their crops in the fertile fields by the river. Over the coming years, there will be an increased risk of flooding and later famine and drought could threaten the lives of these people. The water is still flowing, but the Ganges is already overused. There are numerous canals branching off from the river, taking the water to distant regions for agriculture. When the glaciers are gone, there will be no more water here. The fields will dry up and the farmers are not farming for India alone, but the global market. They are already heavily dependent on the Ganges. Even the monsoon rains were not enough for irrigation this year. So when Ganga water dry, then all water dry. When Ganga finished, everything finished. China has been just as badly affected as India. In the leading institute of the global glacier monitoring in Zurich, scientists are comparing data of the same glaciers in 1990 and 2000. The glaciers that feed into the Chinese river Yangtze are melting too. Here you can see that huge lakes are forming on top of the glaciers. Where there was a lot of snow in 1990, by 2000 there was no more snowfall and no new ice. Sie haben alle sehr wenig Schnee, 
Snowfalls were very scarce, which means they could only build very little ice during that year. Only basins located at a very high altitude retain large amounts of snow, but even these were at levels below average. This isn't enough for a glacier to even just stay healthy. Basically, these glaciers can't ever grow back to their former size and will shrink dramatically. Professor Fischlin from the Federal Technical University Zurich is one of the leading scientists on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. If the world in Copenhagen can't find a common ground or create the conditions for an agreement in the very short term, then the glaciers are indeed in danger. They would have completely melted within a few decades. In order to meet the goals that are crucial for the world at large, we must help India. India doesn't have the resources on its own to develop the kind of groundbreaking green technologies that will be beneficial to all of us. Green technology for all of us? Car traffic in India is becoming more and more congested. 750 million Indians are burning biomass and waste products, and rubbish is just incinerated. The Indian government knows it has a problem, but it also knows that the West will suffer from the consequences of the glacial meltdown. At the State Institute for Energy and Resources, Professor Hasnain speaks of the global importance of the third pole. Third pole, because it's the largest reservoir of ice outside the polar regions. And uh, the only distinctive feature of this pole is that it sustains about 2.5 billion people. The entire global community uh, will be affected because such a huge number of people will be without any uh, water and natural resources. Time is running out for the glacier. Next year, the ice would have retreated further. Dr. Dobal and his team are studying the holes in the ice with meter-long bamboo poles. The poles will be able to tell them how much the glacier has lost in mass. <laughs> the glacier is about 50 meters thick. The loss for 2009 has been considerable once again. The melting is almost two meters in one year. In 20 years, this glacier will be gone. The Himalayan glaciers are far from Europe, but the effects of their disappearance will be felt here. When the means of existence of two and a half billion people are threatened, economic and political international relations will feel the effects.